Online classes and sessions provided by British Blind Sport and our partners are for educational purposes only. They should not be used as a specific treatment plan or course of action. The creators, producers, participants, instructors and or distributors of this programme cannot claim any liability for injury or loss in connection with the exercise, activities and advice contained herein. Exercise is not without risk of injury, aggravation of a pre-existing condition or overexertion and therefore you should always consult a healthcare professional for appropriate exercise advice and safety precautions. As with any exercise program, if you feel faint, dizzy or have any physical discomfort during the session, you should stop immediately and seek medical advice. Any participant of these online sessions assumes the risk of injury resulting from performing the exercises or activities described. Um, VI tennis is one of the fastest growing um, disability sports in, in the country. Um, it was introduced to this country back in 2007-2008 um, and it has been growing quite rapidly since then. Um, it's played with a, a sound ball, um, so it's basically a sponge ball, there's black and yellow varieties. Um, depending on your surroundings and, and obviously um, personal preference. However, for all tournaments, it's always a yellow ball that's used. Um, all um, players that are B1 classified in, in sport, they have three bounces. Um, for two and three, they have two bounces. And for four and five, it's one bounce only. Um, the court's area is um, slightly smaller than a normal size court currently. Um, Partly because of the ball, because it doesn't fly too far. So the, uh, the B1 court is kind of um, played in the, set, in the service boxes of a, a normal size court. So it's quite a short court uh, and the net's a bit lower as well. And then the, uh, the B2, 3, 4 and 5 play on a, what's called a three quarter court. So it's almost three quarters of the, the size of the court and the net's um, the same height as normal. So it's pretty much um, tennis. It's the same sport. It's the same rules. The scoring system's the same. Um, the only real difference is either the size of the court and the number of bounces you're allowed to use. Um, so that's why it's great. It feels like tennis when you're playing it. It's not a different sport entirely at all. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic. We have uh, sessions all across the country um, for, for everyone. So anyone's welcome to most sessions across the country. Um, and we're also running um, tournaments uh, starting to start again now ish and then into next year as well. Um, so we'll get started with a, a quick warm up. Um, if you've got uh, find some quite a big space, um, we're going to imagine that there's a, a clock on the floor. So 12 o'clock is straight ahead, uh, 3 o'clock is to your uh, right. Six o'clock is behind you and nine o'clock is out to the, uh, the left of you. So if you all uh, stand up, if, if you can, and find yourself a, a big enough space, we're just going to do a little warm up. So we're going to do some little um, exercises to get warmed up. So to start off with just a few, uh, a bit of jogging towards 12 and then back, uh, backwards towards six, come back in, uh, back again to 12, come back again, back towards six. And we'll do that three or four times. So you're just getting warmed up. Um, if you want to go maybe towards one or two as well, just so you're starting to change direction, again, try and get back to the middle each time. Um, one more go. Okay, and then uh, we'll go side to side this time. So we'll go uh, three to nine this time. So like side steps, so keeping your toes pointing forwards. Um, sideways is obviously really important movement in, in tennis. So um, toes facing towards 12 o'clock and then just some slight steps. Try not to get your feet together. I try and keep going across to nine, to three, to nine, to three. Um, what we'll do then is we'll then now turn to the side. So if you turn to face to the, uh, the right hand side to three o'clock, and we're going to do the same movement, but facing to the side this time. So this is useful if you're moving forwards and backwards on the tennis court. So we'll face to the right and then move towards 12 and back, and towards six. Come back. We'll do this a couple of times. Two 
one that we go warm even if everyone else isn't. Uh, okay, and then back to the middle. If you turn to face the other way, so you're now facing towards your left, towards nine o'clock, and we'll go again, 12 to six. Forwards and backwards. 12 to six, a couple of times each time. And then back to the middle, and again, face towards 12. Um, so hopefully some of you will have a, a sound ball to use, maybe a jangle ball, um, if you've been at some uh, events. Um, so I'd say your ball and uh, facing towards 12, you're just going to drop the ball and let the ball bounce as many times as you want before you try and catch it. Um, yeah. When you're trying to catch it, make sure you're bending your knees, not your back, um, to help you uh, not get injured with your back. Um, Again, you're allowed as many bounces as you want. Um, and as you're moving, uh, as, as you're finding it easy, try and move. As you catch. It might be that you, if you've got a bigger space, you could throw it over your head to see if you can um, start turning and then pick up the ball as well. So let's try that one. So over your head, couple of bounces, and then catch again. Pull it out to the side. To the side. Okay, have a few goes of that. Again, if you're finding it easy, there's an, an extra way of doing this. So you could try and clap um, before you catch it. So it could be up, clap, and then catch. Up, clap, and then catch. And again, if you introduce the movement, it makes it more tougher and more realistic to tennis as well. So throw it away, flat, throw it away, flat, flat. Over your head. Okay. So hopefully you've all had a go at that one. And the next one we're going to have a little go at, you're going to try and bounce it down to the ground this time. So this one, you're going to keep your hand facing down, flat to the, flat to the floor. Um, Drop it to start off with, and then it's just more like a pushing motion, not a flapping motion. So you push with your arm. Um, push with your arm. If you can um, do it with one hand, try your uh, your other hand. And if that is easy, try both hands. So one hand and the other hand alternately. Um, again, in tennis, it's important to have, have use of both hands. Um, and again, to make it more uh, more difficult for you, you maybe want to try and use um, your hands as you move. So try and go one hand, other hand, and move around the space that you're in. And a couple of goes with that. Okay. Um, the next one we'll try, you're going to try and go um, one up, then one down. So you go, put the ball up. Two, down two. Up for two, down for two. So when you're going up, try and get the palm of your hand facing up to the sky and get it again, more like a pushing motion rather than a flapping motion with your wrist. So it's your arm moving up and Try and just tap it. So right, trying to go too fast, otherwise the ball's going to go anywhere. So it's palm of your hand up, palm of your hand up, and then down, so up with the palm of your hand, and then down with the palm of your hand. If you're feeling really energetic this morning, you can try it without the bounce between hitting it up and down. So it's up, then down, up, then down. Okay, so that's trying to get you to think about some um, when you're, if you're classified from B2 to B5, 
um, you can volley. Um, so that, that's a shot without the ball bouncing. Um, so that's a, a good way to try and win points, try and take time away from your opponent. Okay. Uh, the next one we're going to try, um, the last one, sorry, in, the, in some in ball skills, um, you're going to try and put the ball up and then trap the ball with your hand. So again, bend with your knees, not your back. So put the ball up and then trap it to the floor so it's not bouncing back up. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see this. Up, then trap. Up, then trap. And so it's then easier. Um, the next thing we'll try then, you need a racket um, or uh, something like a frying pan, or if you want to, your hands, you can. Um, so if you put your racket in your, your best hand, your strongest hand, um, the first one we're going to try is just for you to get the feeling and, and following the ball, tracking the ball, you're going to put the ball on the floor. And then you're going to push the ball from behind the ball with your racket, and you want your wrist facing towards where the ball is. Okay. If you're feeling thinking if it's too easy, then maybe hit the ball a bit harder so it moves a bit further away from you. So it's not constantly on your racket, but you're having to move and then track the ball each time. Again, make sure you're in a big enough space to be able to do it. If you're only in a small space, try and make sure you only do a little hit. Okay. Okay, so the next uh, one to practice then, um, put your ball on your racket or on, onto your hand and try and have a go at this. So you're going to go, let the ball go up and then try and catch the ball. So you're going to go up and then try and catch the ball with your racket at the bottom and your hand on top. Up, plant and catch. Okay. When you try and catch it, try and keep your racket and your hand close together, because if you get it too far away, it's too difficult to catch it, and the ball will go anywhere. And when you're trying to hit your shots, you want to try and keep your racket close to where you're going to hit the ball, because then it's easier to make contact with it. Okay. If that is too easy again, try and go one with your best hand, catch with your worst hand. And I swap hands with my racket. So if I start with my right hand on my racket, when the ball is in the air, I swap over to put my racket in my left hand, and then I catch. And this time, I start with my racket in my left hand, put the ball up, swap, and then catch with the racket in my right hand. And let's let go that one. So the next one we'll try, um, this time is without the catch. So the, the ball is still going to go upwards. Again, keeping your wrist facing the direction you're going to try and get the ball to go. My wrist facing up a little bit on the racket. And it's, you're up, the ball is going to go up and a up and a bang. Again, when the ball goes down, try and make sure that it's your knees that are bending up your back, and that will help your racket stay straight. And keep your, your racket facing up towards the uh, towards the ceiling on the side. Up and about. Up. Again, if you want to take more bounces before you hit it up, then that works as well. So I need to do as great bounces as I can. Okay. 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 
and try and challenge yourself each time. If you can do it with one, and try, uh, if you can do it with three bounces, try two bounces. If you can do it with two bounces, try one bounce. Uh, the next one we're going to try, we're going to try and hit down to the ground this time. So we're going to start the racket a bit higher than the ball. And just like you did with the ball skill, where you make it more like a pushing motion, where you push down with your arm, it's the same thing. So try to flat with your wrist and push down with your arm. So your, your hand is now facing down on the racket and your racket strings are pointing down. So we try and push it down. Again, you're allowed as many number of bounces as you want. So if you want to do or three, then that's fine. And I just want to show you with your hand. So it's similar to what we were doing before. So you just down with your hand like that. Um, if you were using a balloon, so I've got a balloon here. I've got a piece of string attached to it as well with a little loop on it so I can lift it by my hand. And then again, I'm just going to down. That's less, <laughs> that's good. Um, okay, the next one then. Uh, the last one, this one's pretty uh, pretty difficult. So if you're feeling really uh, like challenging yourself, you can gonna... try and hit the edge of your apple this time. Okay, so that's pretty uh, pretty tricky. Um, this is quite good for practicing um, a bit of serving. So like, you're going to try and hit past, almost like chop the ball as you try and do it. So chop the ball each time. And if that's too difficult, you can maybe try one with the frame, one string. So it's not always with the frame of your racket. Again, as many bounces as you want, you can use that. That's fine. Um, now, if you have a uh, uh, someone who's with you, um, you can try some, uh, maybe try and do some little, uh, one person hits it along the floor and the other person hits it along the floor. If you don't, then uh, find a wall. So I've got a piece of uh, glass next to me there. So the ball is going to go on the floor. And this time, you get, again, you're going to get your racket starting behind the ball. And you're going to push it out towards the, the glass when it comes back, uh, or the wall, sorry, and then you're going to try and trap it. So I'm going to hit it along the floor. When it comes back, I trap it on the floor. Again, bending your knees, not your back. Right, then my knees get my racket starting behind the ball, push towards the floor, and when it comes back, trap it. Now, if this is, if you've got a big enough space, try and hit the wall at an angle. So rather than hitting the back of the ball, Maybe you hit this slightly at the side of the ball and the ball will come off an angle, so you have to move to catch it. Um, if you're if you've played a bit before, you might be able to choose forehands and backhands for this. So I might be able to hit one with my forehand, with one hand, and then I put my other hand on top of my racket like this before I strap. And then hit the next one. Back with my own forehand. And then hit, turn on the other side, chuck the feet back. So we have that each time. Maybe four or five of those. Okay. Okay. Um, the last little bit, then we're, we're going to have a go with forehand to backhand. Is you're going to instead of hitting it off the floor, have a little go like this. So your racket is going to start low, the ball is going to start slightly higher than your racket. You're going to drop the ball and then try to hit it towards the wall. Again, if you've got a partner that you can work with, then you can have a partner as well. So you might be that I drop it and when you hear the ball bouncing a few times, try and swing when you can hear the bounce. Okay, so when you hear the bounce, that's when you swing. 
and racket low, ball starting high. No, if you start the ball too high, the ball's gonna bounce high. So you can change how high the ball is bouncing, how far away the ball and racket start away. So if I start really far away, Higher. If you want to try a, a, a backhand and you want to put it on my racket. Uh, ball high, racket low, holding it with my weakest hand. I'm going to drop it, put my other hand on, and then hit it. One more. I'm going to start with my hand uh, on the top of the grip, my weakest hand top, ball nice and high, put my other hand on. I start with my racket high, almost above my head this time. I start with the ball pretty high. A little bit in your strongest hand still. And my racket starts nice and high. The ball starts next to the, uh, next to the racket. And a little push up and then a hit. Bigger. If that is too easy, then the easiest way to make it more challenging is to make the ball and the racket further away. So if the ball and the racket are almost touching to start with, then gradually make your, the ball and your racket further and further away, and then it's um, a little bit easier. Okay, so start racket nice and high. My ball can start a bit further away this time. I need to put my ball up high enough so my racket is almost staying above my head each time. And a few more goes with that. Okay. Okay, and the last uh, last thing or thing we'll we'll try is to put it all together. So if you against your wall, if you have a big enough space, then this time you're going to try and serve against the wall, and then try and hit the next shot back. Okay. I'm going to try and serve it against the wall, and then tap. Okay, I start with a serve, so that's the one where my racket starts high, and I'm trying to hit it above my head. The racket starts high above my head, and I try and get. Okay. If that is too uh, too difficult. What you can try is to serve against the wall, and the next ones you roll against the wall. So I go serve against the wall, wrap it along the floor, and then, like we were doing right at the start, playing along the floor, and maybe try one forehand and one backhand. One forehand and one backhand. And again, the backhand is when you have uh, two hands. Um, to show you what you could do with the if you had a balloon instead. So I'm always trying to put something in the balloon. So today I've got sugar in the balloon. You could try rice or lentils or um, dried peas works quite well. Um, each one will make a slightly different noise as well. Um, today I've got it attached to a piece of string um, just so it doesn't run away too much. Uh, and again, I could try start with the serve the same as before. So I start with my racket slightly above my head. Put the balloon up and then it Put my head and then when it comes back, find it. So after the serve, the balloon, if it's connected to your wrist, will go down and then that's when you can hit the forehand. Okay. Now, racket five, put the balloon up 
For more audio led at home workouts, head over to www.britishblindsport.org.uk forward slash active dash at dash home.